Uh, you also brought your husband, uh, Chaston, on a military aircraft to attend a sporting event in Netherlands. Um, have, was that <laughs> That's what it's been to put on. No, no, no. But I mean, was that reimbursed? Because that was one of the controversies of course the not. price. I led a presidential delegation to support American wounded warriors the and Invictus injured games. service members, the Invictus Games, as has been tradition for many years. I led the American delegation. It was one of the great honors of my time in this job. And the diplomatic protocol on a presidential delegation is that the principal is often accompanied by their spouse. It was a great trip. It was incredible. It was also a few weeks into the Ukraine war. So we had a chance at the U.S. Embassy to engage with the Ukrainian competitors, also wounded service members. Some of them went from the games back to the battlefield to fight for their country. I also took the opportunity to sit with the Prime Minister of the Netherlands to look at port infrastructure, Dutch port infrastructure. But here's what I want you to understand. Before me, uh, it was the Secretary of the Army under President Trump who took that trip with his wife. Before that, it was Mrs. Trump as First Lady who went to the Invictus Games. Uh, before that, Mrs. Obama did the same thing. Sure. And I guess the question on my mind is, if no one's raising questions about why Secretary Esper and his wife led that delegation, no, and as well they should have, then why is it any different when it's me and my husband? Understood. So. First of all, here's my favorite part. You can tell immediately that Brett Bear knows he screwed up, immediately. And we've all been there, where you say something and you instantly wish you could pull those words right back into your mouth. The difference being that you didn't do it on national television in the face of someone who will run rhetorical circles around you. I don't think I've heard someone pray for the end of a response so that they could change the subject louder than Brett Bear was praying for Pete to stop talking right here. I could practically feel this dude's desperation for the earth to open up and swallow him whole. I almost felt bad for him. I don't, to be clear, but I almost did. This is Pete Buttigieg making really, really short work of Fox host Brett Baer as the host found himself completely out of his depth while taking a cheap shot at Pete Buttigieg. Now I imagine that he thought he could toss out some red meat to Fox's base by trying to land a gotcha on Pete about some supposed wasteful spending, along with a reminder about his sexuality for good measure. Now there was red meat, but it was Pete pretty much chewing up and spitting out Brett Baer on his own show. Now I'm assuming that the reason Brett Baer decided to pursue this wasteful spending narrative has something to do with an article published on Fox's website titled, Pete Buttigieg Often Flies on Taxpayer-Funded Private Jets, Flight Data Show. In the article, Buttigieg is accused of hypocrisy for apparently taking all of these flights despite calls to cut carbon emissions. But when you read the article and you scroll way down to the bottom, what you find out is that as Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg has actually taken 126 flights and 108 of them were on commercial airlines, meaning that 86% of the time, Pete flies commercial and 14% of the time, Pete flies private. And look, I'm no master of the English language, but if you do something 14% of the time versus 86% of the time, would you say that you're doing that thing often? Or would you maybe, just maybe, say that you're doing that thing rarely? Because I'll bet the writer of this op-ed, Thomas Catanacci, knows the difference even if he's playing dumb to land some desperate gotcha on a Democrat. The explanation for the few flights that Pete did take private says, quote, given that commercial air travel is usually the cheapest way for the secretary and his staff to travel, 108 of the 126 flights for DOT trips he has taken have been on commercial airlines. However, there are some cases where it is more efficient and or less expensive for the secretary and accompanying personnel to fly on the nine-seater FAA plane rather than commercial commercial flights. Use of the FAA plane in limited, specific cases has helped to maximize efficiency and save thousands of taxpayer dollars. In other words, the taxpayer is spending less money by opting for the government planes in instances where it's less expensive to do so. Tell you what, if that somehow qualifies as a scandal by Fox News' standards in the Biden administration, I think we're okay. And just one note here about Brett Baer. I know people go easy on him because he's supposed to be one of the straight news guys on Fox. First of all, he is a hack. It's just that when you put him up against Laura Ingram and Sean Hannity and Tucker Carlson, he seems less of a hack by comparison, but that doesn't make him not a hack. And second of all, in a way, what Brett Baer does is worse because we all see Tucker and Laura and Hannity for exactly who they are. They are fear porn for an aging white base that wants to be scared shitless on a nightly basis. But Bear presents himself as a serious reporter, and in doing so, lends an air of credibility to that network. A network, again, where their primary offering isn't news, it's opinion by the Tucker Carlson's and Laura Ingram's and Sean Hannity's. He gets the viewers in the door. He gives Fox plausible deniability to call itself news. 
Fox gets to point to Brett Baer and pretend that he's what the outlet is offering, when in reality, it's the opinion show trash that are their real money makers. Let's not pretend for a second that Brett Baer doesn't know that. Which is not to say, by the way, that Brett doesn't also traffic in the same homophobia and xenophobia and racism that's common on Fox. After all, their viewers are their viewers and they want what they want. We see in this clip that he's not above taking a cheap shot when he's got one in front of him. He's just been able to dress it up a little better than Tucker Carlson, who's physically incapable of not letting his bigotry drip off his face. But again, clearing the embarrassingly low bar set by someone like Tucker Carlson doesn't make Brett Baer Walter Cronkite. And by the way, this isn't the first time that Buttigieg has taken it upon himself to embarrass some Fox hosts on their own network, none of whom managed to learn that they will never be able to present themselves as smarter or better prepared than he is. Well, you're, you've been approaches, pushing but... for this, you've been very consistent with that, but Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, the Georgia Republican at a rally in Michigan, said this uh, past weekend uh, that Mr. Buttigieg is trying to emasculate the way we drive, by, as she goes on to explain, by supporting environmentally friendly transportation. But what did you think of her wording? I, I literally don't even understand what that means. I mean, my sense of manhood is not connected to whether my vehicle is fueled by gasoline or whether it's fueled by electricity. This is a practical matter. Were you offended, by, were you offended sure. by that, sir? Because even people who, you know, share her politics didn't share that view. It was a strange thing to say. I, I, you know, to, to be honest, there are other members of Congress that I pay more attention to uh, when I'm thinking about uh, opinions that that, that uh, really matter or ideas that are going to be critical to engage with. I, I do think we need to zoom out a little bit, and I know people want to make this ideological. They want to make it political. We're talking about something like electric vehicles. We're talking again about a very practical matter, which is how we get from point A to point B. And if industry in the world are uh, moving in a direction that adept, uh, adopts a new technology, you know, the real question is, are we going to let China lead that or are we going to lead it here in the United States of America? Your husband tweeted after uh, Justice Brett Kavanaugh left a Washington restaurant due to protesters. The tweet reads, sounds like he just wanted some privacy to make his own dining decisions. Is that appropriate, sir? Look, when uh, public officials go into public life, we, we should expect two things. One, uh, you should always be free from violence, harassment, and intimidation. And two, you're never going to be free from criticism or peaceful protest, people exercising their First Amendment rights. Okay. And that's what happened in this case. Remember, the justice never even came into contact with these protesters, uh, reportedly didn't see or hear them. And these protesters are upset because a right, an important right, that the majority of Americans support was taken away. We crunched the numbers. We'd find that 5.5% of the $2 trillion, well, 5.6, of the $2 trillion proposal is only dedicated to roads and bridges. Why is that? Well, we're talking about roads and bridges. We're talking about rail and transit. We're talking about airports and ports. As you mentioned, uh, we're talking about things like the grid. Uh, I don't know why anybody would say it's a mistake to invest in the grid after what we just witnessed in Texas. We, we saw US citizens living in Texas, melting snow in their bathtubs to be able to flush their toilets in the United States of America. That is unacceptable. So yes, infrastructure includes energy infrastructure. You know what else is part of infrastructure now? Broadband. I'm proud of the fact, even though it's a little outside my lane on the transportation side, I'm proud of the fact that we're gonna finally get broadband out to every American because we know, especially in rural areas, how much that's cutting people off from opportunity. Good infrastructure planning is always about looking to the future. You know, railroads weren't part of infrastructure until we built them. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm sure in the Eisenhower area, they weren't thinking about things like broadband. They were still working on electrification, which would have sounded newfangled in its time. Now it's time to prepare for the future. And the millions of jobs that will be created by this bill are because this bill looks to the future. So if Brett Baer decided to try and spar with Pete Buttigieg, knowing how it's worked out for Fox hosts in the past, then he's got no one to blame for that beatdown other than himself. 
Before you go, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can click the thumbnail right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work even further, the best way is to subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. There you can check out my interviews with major players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, Jamie Raskin, and so many more. Plus other interviews that live exclusively on the podcast. That link is also right here on this screen, or just search No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen wherever you listen to podcasts.